For the following exercises, evaluate the expressions, writing the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so we've done tons of problems like this uh, in this playlist already. If you guys aren't on the complex number playlist, I highly recommend it just so that you guys can see all the complex number and imaginary number questions that we've done. Link is in the description. Uh, but without further ado, let's tackle these guys. So on the left hand side, we have one divided by i plus four divided by i to the third. Now in the, the last uh, question that we've done, we went over what i means and i squared i to the third and i to the fourth. So just to recap, right? Remember, i is just imaginary number, right? The specific definition for an i value is always the square root of a negative one. Remember that when we have square roots, the number below the square root has to be a positive in order to get a real value out. So the square root of 25 is five, the square root of four is two. However, if we decide that we wanna take the square root of a negative value, this is not a real solution. If you actually plug this into the calculator, the calculator is going to have absolutely no idea what to do <laughs> because it's not a real value. So that's why we have to denote these answers as imaginary, AKA an I value. So by doing math and simplifying, if we took two of these together and we took an I times an I, which is i squared, we wind up with just a negative one value. This would be basically doing the square root of negative one and then squaring it, right? Because i is the square root of negative one. I'm squaring this and then a square and the square root, they're opposites of each other. So that's how you just get the negative one is always equal to i squared. i to the third, which is i times i times i, i to the third would be an i squared times an i, right? Two plus one is three. So it would be a negative i. Negative one times an i is just a negative i. And then i to the fourth i to the fourth would be basically taking i squared timesing it by i squared. Negative one times itself is a positive one. So just know this idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually, this is, this is fine enough. So just know this little schematic over here. Okay. So we're going to use that in order to simplify our fractions over here to try to, you know, get it down to a simplified complex number. Okay. So after I'm done coloring, that looks such a lovely green. Okay. So one divided by I, this is already in its simplified form. So I can't do anything for that. However, there's an I to the third here, an I cubed. This I can simplify and I have to use my rules. We said that I to the third was actually a negative I value. It was just equal to a negative I. So instead of having it as I to the third, I'm just going to have it as a negative I value. So you start off like that. This is the same thing as one over and actually I'm going to put it down here. So this is the same thing as one over I plus four over negative I. Uh-oh, we don't have the same um, denominator, right? So we should kind of have the same denominator or at least try to get the i out of the denominator. Remember, i, the imaginary number, can never be in the denominator. So what we have to do is we have to multiply to get it out of the denominator. Now, Usually what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. You can multiply by the same number on both fractions. That's up to you. But I just like to be in practice of always multiplying by that opposite number. So for this fraction, since it was just an I, I'm going to multiply it by a negative I. 
But remember, whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to, to the top. I have to be fair. So I'm going to multiply both of them by a negative i value. Then I'm going to do the same thing for this fraction. I want to try to get that i out of there, right? You can't have imaginary numbers in the denominator. So this was a negative i. I want to multiply by the opposite, so I'll just multiply it by i. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So in essence, I'm going to perform this operation, and then I'm going to perform this operation. Right, I have to work on the two fractions independently, and then finally I'm going to add them together. Okay? So let's work on the yellow highlighted stuff. So that part is just a negative i over negative i times 1 over i. Let's see, I'm just multiplying fractions, so that means that I'm just multiplying the top, I multiply the bottom, and then I see what I get. So negative i times 1 is just a negative i divided by negative i times i is a negative i squared. I still have that i in the denominator, however, what do I know? I know that i squared really equals a negative 1, right? And i squared always equals a negative 1. So I'm just going to substitute. I'm going to say that this is still a negative i divided by negative from the formula here, but then i squared is a negative 1. I'm just going to clean it up. So this would be negative i divided by 1, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So this part just equals negative i. Because negative i divided by 1 is just negative i. So this whole part, I know that this whole thing is just equal to negative i. So I have to plus that with this part. And let's see what that is. So I'm going to write that down below here. 4 divided by negative i times i over i. I'm just multiplying fractions, so you multiply the numerator, you multiply the denominator, and then you simplify. So 4 times i is 4i over negative i times an i is a negative i squared. And the same idea happens here. i squared equals negative 1, so this would be a 4i over a negative negative 1. So this would be 4i over positive 1. So it would just be 4i. So this whole side equals 4i. And now all I have to do is just plus them together. So negative i plus 4i is negative 1i, right, because that's the same thing, plus 4 is a, a 3. So this would be 3 i. And that's your final answer for this one. It's in simplified complex number because I only have one i here. Let's do the same idea with this one. So first off, I want to use my rules to try to simplify i to the 11th and i to the 21st. So let's work on i to the 11th first. Let's see. Now when we try to break down these big numbers, I always like to try to get them in terms of i to the 4th. Mainly because i to the 4th is just equal 1. So you could always easily simplify, you know, i to the 4th because it's just times by 1. So I say to myself, how close can I get to 11 by multiplying by 4? I can do 4 times 2, right? That's the closest, right? That, that's 8. I can't do 4 times 3 because then I'll be over. I'll be at 12. Can't go over. You can always go under. So I'll be able to get rid of 8, but I want to get to a total of 11. How many more numbers is that? Well, 8, 9, 10, 11. I need 3 more to get me to 11. So this would be the same thing as, as saying if I, if I had 2i to the fourths, right, being multiplied by each other, and then I have an i to the third. 4 
plus 4 plus 3 gets me 11. Remember, when you're multiplying these exponents, remember it's really addition. So 4 plus 4 plus 3 is i to the 11th. And now I know that i to the 4th is a 1 times i to the 4th again, which is a 1. So that's why I like to do i to the 4th, because, you know, it's, it's basically just get rid of it, multiplying by 1. And then i to the 3rd is a negative i. So i to the 11th really equals negative i. So this whole thing is really just a negative i. Now let's do the same thing to get to i to the 20th, or the 21st. So I use my rule of 4. How close can I get to a 20 if I'm multiplying something by 4? Well, 4 times 5 is 20. And then all I have to do is just plus, plus one additional one. Now, we can, you know, sit here and say i to the 4th times 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 i to the 4th, you know, 5 times. But I'm just going to show you a different way. This would be equivalent to saying that I have an i to the 4th how many times? 5 times, right? So I just raise it to the 5th. When you have exponents in this fashion, that's multiplying. But when you have exponents straight across like that, you're adding the exponents. And then how many other ones do I need? Well, I have 20 here. I need one more. So I just tag it along. I to the first, basically, right? Or just I. And then I to the fourth, just like we said, was 1. So 1 to the fifth times I. 1 to the 5th, 1 to any number is always going to be 1. So it's 1 times i, right? Which is just i. So this is an i. Ooh, the plot thickens. So now we know that it's 1 over a negative i minus 1 over i, right? So... What we can do is we can do everything that we did before and multiply by the reciprocals to try to get rid of the i's on the denominator. But I also want to show you a different way. Now, remember that, you know, math is very fluid, right? It is strict but fluid at the same time. Fluid in, in meaning that, you know, we're saying here that this was the negative i, right? But remember, a, a negative in a fraction is saying that the whole thing is negative. So does it matter really who is negative, whether the i is negative or the one on the top is negative? No, because whether I say that the i is negative or the one is negative, the whole thing is still gonna be negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this negative and I'm actually gonna shoot it up to the one on the top because then look what happens. Oh, it's a nice fraction. They have common denominators. So I don't have to simplify anymore. I can just do my subtraction. So here, this would be the same thing as saying I have negative 1 minus 1 all over i. Right? When we um, you know subtract fractions, we always keep that denominator. We don't do anything with it. It just has to be common. So this would be the same thing as saying you have a negative 2 over i. But we still need that simplified complex number. I cannot have the i in the denominator. So now instead of doing both simplifying, I'm only going to just simplify this one fraction. So let's see. I have an i in the bottom. I always want to multiply by the opposite. So this would just be multiplying by a negative i. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Now let's see, and if I can, let me just bring this a little bit over here just so that we have more space on the right-hand side. Working with the top, negative 2 times a negative i is a 2i, all divided by a i times a negative i is a negative i squared. And going by our rules, remember, i squared is a negative 1. So this is a negative 1. So this would work out to being 2i 
all over negative, because there's a negative here, but then i squared is negative 1. This works out to being a positive, right? A negative times a negative 1 is a secret positive 1. And then 2i divided by 1 is just 2i. So this whole thing, so I'll just put this over here, 2i. So this whole thing would just equal 2i. And there you go. Guys, what do you think? This is fun. Just running math with, with complex numbers. We guys got, we, well, you guys got this, all right? So let me know in the comments what you thought. Give this video a like if it helped you, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to help us out. It would really mean the world to us, and I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys have been awesome. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a great day. Happy studying. Let's keep it going, and I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.